Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, on this wonderful discussion today regarding the flu season 2020 and 2021. I am Allison Burjinski, the Associate Director of Infectious Diseases in the Northeast, and I'm here with my friend and colleague. Good morning, Allison. This is Stan Martin. I'm Director of Infectious Diseases. I think every year there's all sorts of questions that people have about flu and about the flu vaccine. Uh, because it's this annual recurring phenomena, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there and people also uh, are just kind of used to it being there in the background and not having to think about it that much. Um, uh, so maybe we can talk about some of those ideas that may be a little bit more wrongheaded than, than others. So the first one that I'll bring up, Allison, and I'm interested in some of your thoughts about this, is uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, the flu happens every year. It's really not that serious. I don't really need a vaccine. I'm a young, healthy person, et cetera. What are your thoughts about that one? Yeah, you know, I think it's fascinating that this is a, a, an important topic that comes up almost every year. Um, you know, us in the, in the infectious diseases world, you know, we do find ourselves educating, um, you know, friends, family, patients, and even staff on this. And, and it is fascinating because, you know, the flu is serious. I mean, this is something that causes significant deaths, significant hospitalizations, um, you know, it, it, in its weakest form, if you will, it could really just make you feel miserable, um, causes a lot of disruptions in your in your day to day. So, you know, this is something that it, it is serious and, and we should take it seriously. And we have a vaccine that we know is safe and that's effective. Um, you know, we, we joked in the past that we wonder if the name of influenza, we changed it every year to something, you know, like, you know, XI 2020, you know, would that be enough to really spark people's interest in saying, hey, what is this? You know, and if we really delved into the details and the statistics of the mortality um, and of the morbidity, you know, people may take it a little more serious. Yeah, I think a lot of people aren't aware that maybe on average every year, close to about 50,000 Americans die from the flu. Um, and that's not just the elderly, that's across the board and including, um, although much rarer, of course, but including small children, right? Absolutely. The idea of this is by no means, you know, to, to create fear or to create panic, but it really is just to, to talk about the, the reality of this. You know, again, that this, this does cause significant amounts of deaths every year. Aside from just the deaths, uh, you know, think about all the people that wind up having to be admitted to the hospital just because of flu, right? Uh, what is it, something like four to 700,000 people in the United States every year get admitted to the hospital because of flu? Um, and uh, even if you are, you know, one of these kind of young, healthy people, like, like yourself, Allison, or myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we don't have to use the word young, but nonetheless, uh, you know, odds are you're going to be okay, that you're going to get better with flu. Yes, you're going to be sick and miserable for, you know, a week or two. Um, but the big concern, of course, is that the flu is so contagious. And if you get the flu, um, you're going to spread it to a bunch of other people. Um, and some of those people are not going to do so well, right? Some of those people are going to wind up in the hospital. They're going to be at risk for some of the real severe complications because they're older, because they have some underlying heart or lung problems, right? Maybe because they're pregnant, right? Uh, or they have some problem with their immune system. Those people are gonna suffer as a consequence of you know, having a more blase attitude towards uh, the problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you brought up also a really interesting point. I can recall you know, being pregnant with both of my children, and and it was during flu season. Um, you know, I was set to deliver both of them in December, and you know that one of the first things on my mind, you know, and this is, this is the truth, 
you know, was, you know, when can I get my flu shot? Um, and, it, and it was interesting because I had some friends, you know, similar in age and, you know, similar that they were, they were both pregnant and they said, you're, you're going to get the flu shot? You know, is that safe? You know, that you're pregnant. And I said, not only is it safe, you know, you are considered one of the higher risk groups. So it's really important that we do this. Not only is it safe for you to get the vaccine, but you, by definition, are at higher risk of severe flu problems with not just you, but with the baby, right? And so not only is it safe, but you should, you should be one of those people who are first in line to get the flu shot. A lot of people, they question, you know, not only those that in my personal experience, you know, with some of the friends and family with, with the pregnancy question, you know, but also the idea of, oh, I don't like to get the flu shot. You know, it makes me feel sick, you know, or I get a lot, you know, from, from some of our patients, they'll say, no, 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 I, I don't want to get it. You know, I got a flu shot three years ago and it gave me the flu. So, so I'm not doing that. You know, you, I'm sure you've encountered the, the same oh, of course, Of course. Yeah. I think, and that is, I think, myth number three that we want to try to bust today, right, is that the flu shot can give me the flu. Um, I think that belief uh, our experience comes from maybe a couple different areas. I think the first is that uh, if people aren't used to getting the flu shot, when they do get it, the flu shot is a vaccine, right? It's revving up your immune system, right? It's, it's teaching your immune system to respond to, to flu proteins. And when that happens, uh, people can feel a little bit like they are under the weather uh, because that's, that's what happens with an actual infection. The immune system is revving up and that is what of course makes people feel bad, right? That gives them maybe a little low grade fever or a little case of the blahs as it is, you know, and fatigue, myalgias, as we call it, the kind of muscle aches. Um, and that's not uncommon with the flu shot, uh, particularly if you're not used to getting it every year per se. Um, I think also people uh, sometimes just experience other illnesses, right? And they will just attribute it to the flu, uh, even though maybe it was something else that they had, right? And so they think, well, the flu shot didn't protect me from that. You know, they got a cold or something. And I mean, still don't have a cure for the common cold, unfortunately. But uh, we know that the flu shot is going to protect you from the flu and that it's not actually going to give you the flu. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's also important to note that the timing of when we get our flu shot is important. So, you know, getting a vaccine on Monday is not going to provide benefit to you on Tuesday. So, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll really try to educate that, you know, to, to my family, friends, and patients and say that it does take a couple of weeks, you know, for that immunity to build. Um, and certainly, you know, making sure that you're doing what you can do during that time frame, you know, and, and throughout the entire flu season in terms of washing your hands and practicing proper cough etiquette. I'm getting some questions too, you know, a lot with COVID this year. You know, this is definitely a, you know, a new season like we've never, I've never seen before in my lifetime and I'm sure you as well. And hopefully we don't see again, you know, but some questions about, well, should I get my flu shot, you know, in, in August? You know, is that something that I really should, should start thinking about? So, you know, the timing of the flu shot is also, you know, something important. Traditionally, we've, we've recommended you know, you really should wait till the end of September, October, optimal timing. Um, again, because we want to make sure that, you know, you do have a really nice built up immunity by the time flu season's in full swing, which traditionally is around, you know, December or so. But we also want to make sure that you still maintain that level of immunity because flu season can last sometimes, you know, until March, sometimes early April. Ideally, I think, you know, we, we would like everybody to get vaccinated before uh, the November. I think that's kind of the goal to have in mind if you can, because as you say, that gives you a little time uh, to kind of get things revved up in preparation. But it's never too late to get the flu shot, right? So if you, if you didn't get the flu shot in November and December is rolling around, or even if flu season is in full swing, uh, it's not too late. 
uh, get the flu shot because it's still going to be better than not getting it. And this year, as you pointed out, Allison, it's going to be super important because of COVID, right? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, one of the big concerns we have is the possibility of actually having both infections simultaneously, right? So imagine having both COVID and influenza at the same time. Uh, that could potentially result in a catastrophe for that patient, right? Higher risk of being in the hospital, higher risk of needing to go onto a ventilator, a breathing machine, right? A higher risk of death. Uh, those are some of the big concerns we have about, about that. And although we don't have a vaccine for COVID yet, we know we've got the vaccine for the flu, right? Take advantage of a uh, you know, safe and effective therapy that we have available with the, with the vaccine. So speaking of safe, let's talk about another myth about the flu vaccine and that uh, it's just overall safety, right? Because a lot of people still kind of labor under this belief that the flu vaccine is somehow not safe uh, or that it, it contains some mysterious ingredient in it that is going to cause problems uh, with your body. Yeah, no, great, great point to bring up. And, and, you know, I think this is, again, something that comes up every year. So, you know, the flu vaccine has proven, I think, its safety profile for many, many, many years. I think, you know, one of the dreaded side effects is Guillain-Barre. I mean, that is, you know, literally, um, you know, one in a million. Tell people what Guillain-Barre is who may not know what that, uh, have heard that term before. Yeah, absolutely. So Guillain-Barre um, really is more of a, you know, a, a neuromuscular type of um, process where patients tend to experience um, tingling, numbness, usually starts in the lower extremities and can ascend or, you know, move up, you know, to the, to the uh, top of the legs and then the abdomen and then the chest. Um, again, it's, it is one of those um, you know, side effects of vaccinations, uh, one of the dreaded side effects of vaccinations, again, extremely rare. Um, you know, unfortunately, oh. it's also a side effect of viral infections. Exactly. Um, you know. <laughs> In <laughs> is fact, that, is that the point you were getting to say? The risk, the risk of Guillain-Barre with the vaccine is actually lower than the yeah. risk of getting Guillain-Barre from the actual flu virus, right? You're absolutely right. I think another common misunderstanding about the side effects of the vaccine is the, is the risk of an allergic reaction as well, right? Um, we know that the risk of an allergic reaction with, uh, with the flu shot is exceedingly rare. And a lot of people think that if they have an allergy to eggs, that they shouldn't get the flu shot. And I think that's another misconception that just because you have an allergic reaction to eggs or that you're allergic to eggs that you shouldn't get the flu shot. And that is clearly not the case. There have been millions of people uh, with egg allergies who have received the flu shot and the risk of any adverse reaction is exceedingly low. If any of you out there you know, have an egg allergy, don't worry, we got you covered. Now, another common question or maybe misconception I, I hear about the flu shot is that, you know what, uh, sometimes this vaccine just doesn't seem to work. Um, you know, it seems to change every year. People are having to make guesses about, about, the, about what the vaccine should, should have in it in order to be effective. And um, they may personally have even gotten the flu after gotten the flu shot or they certainly may know somebody who, who got flu after the flu shot. Um, what do you say to, to those folks, Allison? Yeah, you know, so you're right. I mean, our, our flu vaccine strains do tend to change every year, um, but that's a good thing. I mean, we, we do <laughs> that because we evolve and we learn information. I mean, interestingly, we get a lot of our information from the Southern Hemisphere. So, you know, down in Brazil and even Australia, you know, they're, they're in, they're in flu season, you know, it's their quote unquote winter. So, you know, what tends to happen is those strains make their way up north and they eventually come to us. Um, you know, so we are in an advantage in that we understand what are the common strains that are circulating, you know, even before they hit us. 
And we also have a lot of information as to, well, what happened last year? You know, what, what was around, what was circulating last year? So, you know, a lot of the um, pharmaceutical companies around the world that, that, um, that make these vaccines for us, you know, they gather that information and make sure that what's included in the current flu vaccine um, tends to fit the common circulating strains. And, you know, they, they come close. I mean, I'm not going to say that it always hits right on the, in the center of the bullseye, but they certainly come close. You know, we also know, which is fascinating, that for individuals who do get a flu shot and then go to go on to actually acquire influenza, they tend to have a much less severe disease course. So, you know, those that had a flu shot, you know, six months, four months later, you know, come down with influenza, it's less likely that they're going to end up in a hospital. It's less likely they're going to end up on a ventilator. So we know there are some pleiotropic effects or, or you know, more advantageous effects of getting that flu shot, even if you do go on to actually get influenza. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's the thing to really try to make people understand is that, you know, no vaccine is 100%, right? Uh, in fact, I have encountered very few things in life which are. Um, but uh, we certainly know at the end of the day, it's better than nothing, right? Uh, and even if it doesn't protect you from getting the actual flu, although most people are protected, right? But mm -hmm. even if you're one of those few that aren't so lucky and you still get the flu after the flu vaccine, your outcome is much better than had you not gotten the flu vaccine because it's still giving you some partial immunity. It's right, it's given your immune system a little bit of a head start there so that when you get the infection, it's gonna do a better job of controlling it. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's, that's a huge benefit that we need to make sure that we recognize. Yes, yes. Um, and we've seen time and time again, certain patient populations who get the flu shot just tend to do better overall. They tend to have less risk of just being in the hospital for other causes. If you have diabetes and you get a flu shot, you are much less likely to wind up in the hospital for any reason yes. uh, after getting the flu shot. Um, that's, those kinds of uh, um, things are important, I think, to kind of hit home with, with patients and with our, our own providers here at Geisinger. Yeah, absolutely. We've had some requests in the past from our employees regarding the um, the high dose shots for people 65 years of age and older. And, um, you know, a couple of those questions have come in over the last couple of weeks. So to let everyone know, we do have those available for our staff. I believe last year was the first year that we had them um, available. It is yep. something though that, uh, you know, we do have, a, we have you make an appointment through employee health. So the process last year was smooth. Um, it went very well, and, and it was great because it really was one of our really high compliant um, groups, both in, in the community um, and also within Geisinger. So to just let everyone know, we got you covered. Um, we do have those, those flu shots available this year. What kind of things would you want to tell folks, Allison, that they can do to try to help prevent getting flu besides the vaccine? Great, great points. So I think a lot of it's going to go back to the basics. And, you know, living in an era of COVID, I'm hoping that we're doing a lot of these things already. So, you know, first and foremost, wash those hands. You know, I think that we talk about that a lot, um, but, and it sounds so simple, but, but really it's one of the most important things you can do. Wash your hands frequently, you know, um, soap and water. If you're not, if you don't have availability of a sink, then obviously, you know, your pocket hand sanitizers that I think all of us, <laughs> uh, you know, are carry around with us. Um, you know, wearing a mask, you know, is definitely something that, that can help. And, and again, living in a COVID era, um, you know, it, in the past, it was something that we requested employees would do in the event that they were not able to receive a flu vaccine, you know, because of a medical reason or um, you know, but, but now we're all living in an era where we're wearing masks. So, um, you know, that's something that, you know, you're protecting your respiratory tract. So something that will help, um, clean frequently. So, you know, high touch surfaces that you're, that you're touching, 
um, often, you know, making sure that you have the appropriate antiviral wipes. Again, you know, one silver lining perhaps to COVID, um, you know, it definitely prepared us um, for our flu season in that sense, because, it, you know, I, I think looking around the hospital, even looking around my home, and I'm sure many of your homes, you know, we have the Lysol, we have, you know, in the hospital settings, the cabbie wipes and the Oxivirs. Um, so again, being mindful of that, you know, the idea of acquiring these, these viruses through contact and through touch and then self-inoculation um, shouldn't be underestimated. So making sure you clean those surfaces and avoid touching your face. The mask surprisingly provides another benefit to me in that it's kind of like a reminder to myself, like stop touching your face. Stop touching your face. So, stop touching your face. So, um, you know, I think that, that again, living in an era of COVID, we've, we've hopefully got those other types of risk mitigation strategies down. So clean those hands, you know, wear your mask, avoid touching your face and making sure that your surfaces that you're around are clean. Um, in addition to the vaccine. I think on average, a lot of doctors and nurses, uh, care providers in general, are going to be uh, struggling to distinguish uh, somebody who has COVID from somebody who has influenza, right? Because the symptoms can be very similar. Fever, cough, diffuse myalgias, you know, as we say, again, the kind of muscle aches throughout the body. They're not necessarily going to be able to tell based on those symptoms between the two. And oftentimes they're going to have to rely on taking a swab and doing a test to try to figure that out. You know, and, and again, speaking to the importance of the flu vaccine, kind of why we're here today and what we're, what we're chatting about, um, you know, it, it's, it's again, it can be very difficult to distinguish, you know, what is going on. Um, so getting that vaccine certainly, you know, is helpful, um, beneficial. For those of you listening, um, you will start seeing some of our employee health campaign ramping up uh, very soon, actually, um, early September. And, you know, just be assured there are no delays in the availability of the flu vaccine. We're getting everything in um, on time and on schedule. Um, we will have more than enough vaccines for our community um, and all of our employees. Um, we do ask that, you know, use our services. You know, we're gonna make it as easy as possible for you guys this year to get those vaccines. So it's gonna look a little different than some of our prior uh, flu seasons and, and our rollouts and our campaigns that we have done. Um, you're gonna see a lot of us really trying to come to you, make it easy for you, some outdoor events, some drive throughs things of that nature. One of the things that uh, our patients should know is that they can get the flu shot really anywhere at Geisinger. Uh, we're going to do a lot of things, uh, as Allison has said, uh, for patients in the community, some uh, drive through sites um, uh, and uh, events uh, in the community to try to help make it even more widely available. But we also want to emphasize that the patient should be able to get a flu shot at any clinic at Geisinger this year. And if they want to, they can even go to the website, which is just geisinger.org slash flu. And if you go to that website, you will find out more information about the flu vaccine at Geisinger, and you can even request an appointment to get the flu shot done there. Your friendly ID docs are always here to help and ask questions, and thanks for listening. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. <laughs>